Hi, welcome back to the bakery. This is Chef Paul, and today we're going to talk about some technology. This machine that I'm leaning on here is a Revolution Delta chocolate tempering machine. Now remember that term, tempering, is interchangeable with pre-crystallization. And what we're trying to do is get the chocolate at the right working temperature so that we can actually use it in the products that we're making. This machine will do that automatically and because if you can hear maybe or you can see the bowl spinning around it actually agitates the chocolate while it keeps it under a constant temperature. This keeps the chocolate in a workable state for your entire workday. This is a fairly small machine as chocolate tempering machines go. They make them even smaller than this. We have a couple of different kinds that we use here at the college. This one's nice for up to 10 pounds of chocolate, keeping it in a nice working state for a good period of time. And really, all we have to do is put our pre-tempered, and if you remember, I talked about that before, chocolate straight from the factory comes in pellets, or calais they call them, that is already tempered. We put them in the machine, and the machine heats the entire batch of chocolate up to a preset temperature. Now, it depends on the type of chocolate you're using. Today we're back to using that 52% Belgian chocolate, so I heated the entire batch up to 112 degrees, which melted everything. Then I turned the machine down to the set tempering temperature, which for this chocolate is 90 degrees, and the machine automatically cooled it down. I added some seed chocolate, which if you remember, the seed chocolate is a pre-tempered chocolate that adds seeds of proper crystals to the chocolate and boom it hit 90 degrees. We're sitting at 90.4 degrees. The chocolate is perfectly in temper and we're ready to use this stuff. Hi and welcome back to the bakery. This is Chef Paul. Today we're going to make one of the most useful things that you can have in your bakery and that's chocolate ganache. Now ganache classically is a mixture of chocolate and cream. Simple enough. You'll see ganache poured on top of cakes. You'll see ganache filled candies. You'll see ganache turned into truffles. And today we're going to make some ganache that we're going to fill some chocolates with. So if you're ready, let's get started. Now the recipe is pretty simple. Typically what you're looking at is usually two parts chocolate to two parts ganache. Easy. One to one, if you had a pound of chocolate, you'd use a pound of cream for a simple poured ganache. The ganache we're gonna to make today is a little thicker and the recipe is a little different. We're gonna use some items you may not have around your house for it. The first thing that I wanna talk about though is vanilla beans. Vanilla beans are really expensive. You see them in the grocery store and you might see one or two vanilla beans in a package for eight or $10. You don't need to do those, all right? Go online. You can even look at online auction sites and buy them by the pound. The real thing to remember is once you've used a vanilla bean, like I'm gonna use it here in a few minutes, don't throw it away. If you like coffee in the morning, take your vanilla bean, dry it out after it's been used, and put it in a bowl filled with sugar. The essence of that vanilla will flow into the sugar and you'll have vanilla scented sugar for your coffee in the morning. When I used to work at a very large hotel, we made a, a classic German bread called Stollen for Christmas, a German fruit bread. And we would use two or 300 pounds of powdered sugar to cover the Stollen with. Over the course of six to eight months, we would take every used vanilla bean, hundreds of them, and put them in a giant bin of powdered sugar so that by Christmas, all of our powdered sugar smelled like wonderful vanilla. So let's get started. This recipe today, and I'll make sure to post a copy of it at the end of this video, simply calls for 350 grams of cream, a piece of vanilla, and what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna take this vanilla and take a knife and simply split the vanilla bean. Don't scrape the vanilla bean out with a knife you'll end up actually scraping the fibers out and those fibers really aren't that palatable, all right? Just split it so that it remains in one piece and we'll drop it in with the cream. We're gonna add 
130 grams of butter, and then we're also gonna add 80 grams of invert sugar. Now, invert sugar is not regular granulated sugar. It's not even corn syrup, though you can use corn syrup in a pinch. Invert sugar is a sugar that has been basically had the molecule split. And a classic invert sugar that's found in nature is honey. Now, the reason we use invert sugar is because it slows down the process of crystallization. So it helps in shelf life. And around here, we have the best honey in the world. And people will tell you that you can leave Tupelo honey sitting out on a shelf forever and it won't crystallize. That's because it's been naturally inverted, okay? So we're gonna take those ingredients and we're gonna bring them to a boil and then simply turn them off and let them cool. Once they've fully cooled off, we're gonna mix a pre-tempered chocolate with our cooled cream. So if you're ready, let's go. We're gonna take and turn on our digital scale. And you know what? Every kitchen needs to have one. They're very inexpensive, but something to remember about baking. While cooking is an art, baking is a science. We don't use recipes, we use formulas. So it's really critical that we be exact in our measurements. And here in the bakery, we use a lot of metric because we can get far more accurate measurements with grams than we can with ounces. All right, so I'm gonna turn my scale on and then I've got it set to grams and we're gonna put a bowl on it. Now the bowl weighs something, so if you'll press the zero button, we will zero it out. So now the scale is only gonna measure what's been put in the bowl. So if you're ready, we're gonna grab some chocolate. Now we're gonna use our tempered chocolate from the machine. I like to put something underneath it so that we don't make a mess. And we're gonna bring that up until we see 500 grams. Now 500 grams is just over a pound, just a hair over a pound. If you'll notice this chocolate is beautiful, it's smooth and glossy, perfect for making our ganache with. We're getting close. Almost there. All right. And you know what? If you go over a gram or two, it's all right. Some of the chocolate is invariably going to stick in the bowl, so you won't be able to get every drop of it anyway. Now we can move our scale out of the way. We're going to introduce another new piece of equipment. And this strainer is called a chinois. Now a chinois is a fine steel mesh strainer. What we're going to do is I'm going to take my cream, butter, invert sugar and vanilla bean mixture that's fully cooled off and I'm going to pour it through this chinois into my chocolate. What I'm trying to do is not let any bits of fiber or that vanilla bean, and I'm not going to throw that vanilla bean away, it's going in my coffee sugar. And then I'm going to take my spatula and begin to make slow circles. Now, use a bigger bowl so you don't make a mess. But you'll notice that as I really slowly work this, the whole mixture is gonna turn chocolatey. This recipe, by the way, is from Jean-Pierre Wiebo. Chef Wiebo is probably the finest chocolatier in the world. I had a chance to train with him a number of years ago. He really is the guy that wrote the book. We have five or six books on just chocolate, actually two of them on nothing but ganache in the library here at Gulf Coast State College. And by the way, if you're interested in lots of books on culinary topics, our library has probably the finest culinary library that you'll see within a thousand miles of here. It really is excellent. So make sure to stop at the library and tell them Chef Paul sent you. 
We're going to continue stirring slowly, and you should be able to see that the whole mass is starting to take on a chocolate look. I don't want to use a whisk for this at all. A whisk will add air into our mixture. That's what they're for. And I'm trying not to add any air. What I'm trying to do is simply combine that chocolate and the cream mixture. Now what this is going to create, and you'll be able to see it here in just a moment, and now there it goes. It's starting to come together. You can see the glossiness. This ganache is fully stable and liquid at room temperature. And that makes it really nice to use for things like pouring over top of a cake. Give it a few more stirs. I'm looking at grain in here, trying to make sure that there's no grain and that my chocolate is nice and smooth and pourable. Now, the nice thing about this chocolate is it's going to set up beautifully and it will remain really soft and smooth on your palate for a very long time. The addition of the invert sugar will help the holding properties of this chocolate and actually keep it fresher for a long period of time. All right? So when we come back, we're going to take and we're going to use this and make some amazing candies. Hi, and welcome back to the bakery. Today we're going to make chocolate bonbons. What's a bonbon, you say? Well, we're going to take a chocolate mold. This is a polycarbonate, hard chocolate mold, very smooth inside. We're going to make a shell of chocolate. Then we're going to take the ganache. Remember the ganache I made? We're going to fill the chocolate with ganache, and then we're going to cap it with another piece of chocolate. And if you remember the properties of chocolate, how it contracts, I'm going to take this, tap it on the table, and we're going to have some beautiful chocolates when we're done with today's video. All right, so let's get started. I've taken my tempered chocolate and put in a bag. The bag just makes this easier. If you have a large tempering machine, then of course you don't need a bag. A small pair of scissors to cut a little hole at the end of the bag. I'm going to go and I'm going to fill each one of these little pieces all the way up. And it's important to fill them all the way up because I want to create a shell of chocolate that's going to hold my ganache. Now I'm going to try to do this as fast as I can because this chocolate is setting up even as we speak. But the problem we have to remember is that we won't want any bubbles in this. So as soon as I get all these filled, I'm going to take and I'm going to tap this. Against the table. Tapping it against the table is going to ensure that we get all the bubbles out. Now comes the messy part. I'm going to take this and now I'm going to dump this chocolate out. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to tap it and if you see then I'm going to scrape and I'm going to turn it upside down on something just to give it a little more room to drop. And we're going to let that set for about five minutes and then we'll be back to scrape them and fill them with ganache. All right, welcome back. My chocolate mold has fully set up. And what I've got to do though is I've got to scrape this chocolate off because I need to create a very clean edge. Now, you can go online and you can look at chocolate tools, but here's something I want you to remember. Anything you can do with paint, you can do with chocolate. So instead of spending $45 online for one of these, go to Home Depot and get yourself a drywall palette for about five bucks. We're going to take this, and the reason I want this is because it's as wide as my entire mold, a little wider, and I'm going to take this and I'm going to simply scrape 
and tap out and try to make sure I don't have any chocolate bits. And then I'll scrape it the other direction. We'll give it a little tap to let the little dry pieces fall out. And now if you see, I've got a nice clean chocolate mold, good clean edges, and they're ready to fill. Now, I'm gonna tip this paper up to move that down. Now I'm gonna take my bag. Now this bag has ganache in it, just our chocolate ganache that we made just a little while ago. And I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna pipe a very small amount. Now, the thing to remember is, you cannot have the ganache come up higher than the chocolate mold. So I'm gonna pipe a little bit in and I'm actually gonna stick the tip down into the ganache as I'm pumping it, and that way I don't get any air bubbles. As I fill these, I'm gonna try to not fill them over the top of the chocolate mold. And believe me, you'll get very fast at this after a while, but you know what? It takes practice. That's how you get to Carnegie Hall. So we keep piping, piping, and piping, and even if some of those little nibs stick up, I'm gonna show you how to fix that in just a moment. So, once we've got those all done, and you might be able to see that some of these are sticking up higher, I'm gonna fix that. Remember, the ganache is still liquid. I'm gonna tap it a few times. and all of the chocolate is now within the mold. So when we come back, I'm gonna cap these off, and we're gonna get ready to have some chocolates. All right, welcome back, y'all. We've filled our chocolate molds with ganache. We tapped it so the ganache flattened out. Now all we've gotta do is cap it. Now, there are a number of ways of doing this. If I had a big bin of chocolate in a large chocolate tempering machine, I would just slather chocolate over the top of this whole thing and scrape it off. But I want to be a little neater, so I'm going to put my chocolate in a piping bag, and I'm just going to pipe a little bit of chocolate on top of each one. And the nice thing about doing it this way is I'm going to be able to just simply tap this mold. This chocolate will flow out two of the edges and we'll be done. Once I get these tapped out, then this has to set. And I'm gonna speed it up today by putting it in the refrigerator, but typically, you shouldn't put your chocolate in the refrigerator, okay? Chocolate is very, very hydroscopic, and it will attract moisture. And not only that, but in the refrigerator, all those other smells that are in your refrigerator will actually start to make your chocolate smell like, well, them. So while I love egg salad, I really don't like my chocolate smelling like egg salad. Once we've got all these filled, I'm simply gonna tap, tap, tap. And as you can see, all of them have filled. Now I've got this one, and it's no problem at all. If you need a little bit more chocolate, just put a little bit more chocolate. Retap, and now it's off to the refrigerator. I'll be back in just a minute. Hi, and welcome back. Well, our chocolate should be done. What we were waiting for was the cap, that piece of chocolate I put on at the end, to fully solidify so that it would contract and make a solid chocolate shell. Hopefully, if we've done everything right, these should just kind of fall out. Now, I may have to give them a little encouragement, but let's see what we got. We're gonna take these and simply turn them over, flex it just a little bit, and then tap. And they start to just come out. Usually, it does take a little bit of encouragement. Sometimes a little flexing of the pan. 
and our chocolates will come out. Now, one thing to remember, whoops, I got a sticker here. There it comes. What this chocolate has done is it's left a very thin layer of cocoa butter on this mold. Believe it or not, I'd use this mold exactly as is to make these the second time. And they would simply fall out the second time because that tiny thin layer of cocoa butter almost acts as a little bit of, well, like cooking spray to help release these. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna get a knife. We're gonna see what they look like inside. If you can notice, some of them have a little bit of a, a pattern on them that's a little bit of a dull pattern. And what that actually is, is a little bit of water spots left over from the last time this was washed. Typically, it's really important when you wash your chocolate molds, I would then go in and wipe them dry so that they don't water spot. I'm gonna take this and let's cut it in half and we'll see that inside you can see the chocolate ganache. And they probably don't taste too bad either. All right, so we're gonna do a lot more chocolate work. We're gonna show off our new chocolate 3D printer. We're gonna make some truffles, have a lot more fun with chocolate. All right, so until then, this is Chef Paul. Thanks for joining us.